Hello, YouTube. It's a gentleman scholar coming right at you from beautiful Manchester, New Hampshire. I just want to do a video that was uh, shorter than one month between, just to say hello. I've been following a lot of videos, so I kind of just want to jump in and say, hey, share my thoughts about whatever comes into my head in any given second. Smoking presently, Lane Limited, autumn, autumn Breeze, I believe it is, or is it Autumn Evening? Probably Autumn Breeze. Anyway, people have said it tastes like um, maple syrup, and I'm okay with that. No problem. So, let's talk about stem cells and time travel today. I'll link them together. It will make sense. Um, last week, a week ago, I believe, but then I went to the seminar on stem cells for a clinic that's a uh, based up in Vermont and um, we got the whole sales pitch it's almost like they're selling a it's almost like they're selling they're doing a pitch for like timeshares or something and believe me we've been to a couple of those I like this tobacco Anyway, we went there, took some notes. My husband has neuropathy caused by a screwed up spine operation. And uh, And it's been hurting him ever since 2016. I would say that 2016 is probably the worst year of my adult life. We're pretty close to. It was definitely a challenge on the marriage. But long story short, one bot spine operation followed by another bot spine operation left him with neuropathy first in the legs and then it went all the way down to his feet. And he's been suffering ever since. He's been um, on different kinds of drugs. He gets up and he's dizzy. He has difficulty walking. He can't go very far. I've seen this disease. I've seen this disease. I've seen this thing age him over the last three years or so. Anyway. We went to the stem cell thing, took notes signed up for a consultation up on um, March 18th. And um, and of course now we're hemming and hawing. Is it a, was it snake oil? Was it a snake oil sales pitch? Did it actually work? Insurance doesn't cover it. And um, the FDA is kind of wonky on it. If you try to do research online, it's kind of hard to separate the hokum from the actual study, you know, the actual science behind it. So we decided eventually to just go anyway, just go for consultation. Thing is, the low end costs like 5000 The middle end costs something like ten, And of course, the higher end, like COPD, the, the 
the cardiopulmonary problems, which are the most complicated, cost like probably like twenty thousand. Anyway. Better freehand for some reason. Anyway, um, so we had to go around and get all the information from all the different places that had seen my husband all with, with all these medical, all these medical things from the operation stuff to the recovery stuff. So, first of all, a little bit of weird time travel here. Bill asked me when the actual dates of the uh, operation were. When you fill out the paperwork to request um, medical information, helps if they know the dates, obviously. So, I went digging in my journal. And I pulled up the exact dates. And it was like weird time travel because as I was flipping through and I'm writing down all this, all this stuff during the traumatic episodes of his therapy and of his rehab and all that other stuff. Those words were jumping out at me. It's like, oh God, this sucks. I hate reliving this, hate with it. But we got the dates and everything like that. But I just thought it was very weird. I never I never look back on my journals after I've written them, unless it's something like that, to find out the date. How do people talk and smoke at the same time? I'll never know. Anyway, we had to go to the following places. Elliott Hospital. New Hampshire Neurospine, and then to Catholic Medical Center, all of which are located in the Manchester area. Well, go to Elliot, no problem. Wait maybe about five, 10 minutes while they burn all the stuff onto a disc, into a CD that you can throw into a computer and pull off all the information you need to show the folks up at the stem cell place. Same with same with uh, Catholic, Medical, Catholic Medical Center. A little longer because their burning technology is a little uh, creaky, but still worked. So, the reason why I skipped over New Hampshire Her New Hampshire Norospine is I can't stand New Hampshire Norospine. If there's something that they'll get wrong, they'll get it wrong. It's like Murphy's Law was designed for this place, and I won't go into um, a gigantic rant about it, but all throughout our dealings with his neuropathy and his surgery, the surgery is done by a doctor over there, and if there was some way they could botch something, they would do it. It doesn't matter what it was. They set us up with the secondary, uh, with a stomach doctor, because of the second operation I had to involve opening my husband up like one of those old Kellogg's portable cereal boxes things, you know, that you opened up and poured milk in. They had to open them up like that and go in through the stomach to get to the spine. They screwed that up. We go there for the consult on that, and no one knew who we were or what we were talking about. And it's because New Hampshire Neurospine sent the... They forgot to send it. So we'll just leave it at that. Anyway, we go there. Sure enough, you had to wait for your information. Wait for their information, like, and of course we decide to like. Uh, they're the only ones that couldn't give it to you right now, and so Bill just to, just to be um, just to be what's the word, uh, petty. If we decide to start nagging about it. it, this was Friday. This is Monday. We know that they probably didn't have the the paperwork, so called them anyway, just to be a hard case. Well. If you read the paperwork, you'd know that we'd get it from two to seven days, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, Bill just went off on them. It's like, what is it with you people? I got it the same day with all the other pe the other places. Why can't you give it to me the same day? I mean, why can't you guys do anything right, basically, is what he said, politely as possible. Well, my husband. So... Call comes back like 10 minutes later. Oh, yeah, we can get it for you, but you have to pay 20 bucks for it. We decided not to go with it because 
But I sure enough, I, I predicted that New Hampshire neurospine would be a gigantic pain in the nuts, and they were. So we will um, just kind of leave them out of the equation. But it just kind of took me back, when we were in that place, it just took me back to a time in my life that I was really not enjoying. And I was just all tensed out about it. Just, uh, I don't know, maybe it's because I read the, those entries in the journal. And it just wasn't, uh, I was just all keyed up. But every other thing went smoothly. It was like going back through time to an unpleasant area in your life. And when you write, I guess when you write a journal, you impart some of your emotional energy down into the pages. And because... Um, those entries are leaping right back out of me. Even though I was looking for dates, some of those lines come back at you. And uh, good reason to keep a journal, if nothing else. Keep your emotional, emotional, your emotional brain pan clean. Practice makes perfect. Okay, enough of that stuff. Um, I'm going to do a couple shout outs to Johnny Onion, um, 2 a.m. Pipe on the Patio, blues guitarist guy. I talked to him on Facebook Messenger and here, obviously. He gives me some artists to listen to. I give him some artists to listen to. I gave him some Amy Mann, and he shot me some. Uh, Some artists that he was fond of. Um, his specialty is blue, uh, blues rock, and um, and obviously he's played a lot of gigs, so he's probably forgotten more music than I've ever listened to. So it was good to us. So I got him, I got him to get in touch with another um, another fellow bluesman, guitarist, piper. I'll call him Steve P. He's not on Facebook. He's not on YouTube, but um, I finally got them hooked up so they can commiserate. Compare notes and everything like that. And Onion's, Onion's a very, very nice guy. Very kind, warm, generous human being. His optimism is enviable. I wish I had even just a quarter of his optimism. But I don't. <laughs> um, Piper64. Um, he just um, put up a video. Like I want to say about yesterday after about a month. He had a chest infection, I believe. So, Piper 64 is a northern lad, which means he's from the north of England. There's the north of England, and then there's the south. He even made a little joke about it's like, with Brexit, we'll tough it out. At least the north will. I don't know about those southerners. So I, I know that I know. So I have some friends up in the north, so I know what he's talking about. And also, peddling Piper is also another um, another Lancashire dude. He posts very brief and. Uh, Brief and informative tobacco reviews, but he's got a broad Lancashire lilt, which, um, oh, Boardwalk Piper, hello. I'm feeling great today. Just had some more snow right beyond this garage door. And I just, um, I had to leave, I had to get my car to here so that the parking lot could plow it. I wanted to do this pipe video, but I didn't want to get into this and then hear the hear the plow going and then rush out. So I just want to do this at my leisure. I'm going on 14 minutes now, but screw it. I don't care. Um, I don't do it very often, so. Yep, yeah, more snow. We have to have a talk with that. Uh, we have to have a talk with that, uh, that groundhog, I think. Pay a little visit to his hole. It's like lighting up a wood stove. Oh. 
every time I let up, I learn more and more. Also, Onion turned me on to Groovin Piper. He's a new guy. Um, younger guy. Oop, who's this? Jimmy Tabaki. And a happy good morning to you. Another beautiful day in Southern Florida. Don't have to rub my face in it. Um, yeah, but you've got 75 pound alligators and sinkholes and God knows what else. So enjoy. <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, I don't know. I think a lot of people just stay in this weather because they're lazy. I am lazy. I don't feel like moving anywhere else. I like New England. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say. Um, as I'm talking along, I probably also just keep it going for another few minutes. Just recently, um, as some of you probably know, I'm into comic books. Yeah, Pedaling Piper. Uh, yeah, I love his Lancashire lilt. He's definitely from the old country. I mean, he was telling this one story about, uh, I guess he was a lineman. And he's up there, he's kind of afraid of heights. Here we go. Kind of afraid of heights. But the guy who's teaching him, don't worry, lad. I can't do their accent, I'm sorry. Don't worry, lad. The ground will stop you. <laughs> the ground will stop you. It's like, yeah, that's that's the kind of, like, you know, northern hand-holding you can expect. But if you, any northerners out there, or anyone who's interested in the north of England, please um, check out a book called Pies and Prejudice. I think it was written by Stuart McConey. Don't quote me on that, but uh, I definitely have the, um, I definitely have the title right. But anyways, I was saying, into comics, so I basically disappeared down the Watchmen rabbit hole. Now, if you've ever seen Watchmen, the movie, there we go. Almost looks like I know what I'm doing. Watchmen is basically based on a mini series that was put out back in the 80s by Alan Moore, an illustrator. Um, Dave Gibbons, and basically it's the probably the first and last word on superhero fiction that it is a seminal work in superhero fiction. It deconstructs it, it examines the layers of it, more like the ultimate thesis on superheroes, and it examines every single angle. It's the most complete world I've ever read in a comic series. Self and it's self-contained, it's been self-contained for years. Ooh, I hear a gurgle. I have to clean that out. Anyway, it's grown in stature over the years. Um, it's been taken apart by every single scholar you can possibly think of with tweezers and a tooth and things. But it's just a great tale. It's a great mystery tale. It's a great superhero tale. Um, the Umbrella Academy, currently on um, Netflix, borrows heavily from it and the X-Men. Someone unkind called it Hot Topic X-Men, which is... Kind of true. <laughs> but Gerard Way, uh, I guess the front man for My Chemical Romance, I believe. He's big into comics, too. So he smashed his love of X-Men and Watchmen into the Umbrella Academy. But anyway, um, saw the movie. Then I want to say about 10 years ago, DC put out something called Before Watchmen. And it basically took all these, all the stuff, all these little minutiae, spelled out in the miniseries and spread it all across different characters. And, um, yeah, I got to see that boardwalk video. Um, so I read all those and then I dove back into the, the core text and I'm like down, down to the last chapter now. And it's just, I'm just in awe of Alan Moore's writing skills to create a world that that's fully realized, fully realized and dense. I mean, the thing is Watchmen had a lot, to, I'm going to go on Watchmen had a lot to answer for. After, you know, after that was out, then everyone followed Alan Moore's lead. Superheroes had to be dark, had to be cynical. If you put on spandex to fight crime, you had to be screwed up somehow. And it just really put a dark... You know when you have a fresh snowstorm and there's like a... There's like a cold... There's like, there's like a... Let's see. 
there's like a coal mill right down and everything, all the snow's covered by this dark, yucky soot. That's basically um, what Watchmen did. I can't blame Watchmen for it and Frank Miller's The Dark Knight, but after that, superheroes became a dark and dreary thing to enjoy indeed. But anyway, I greatly enjoyed it. If you ever want to get into a really serious superhero work, please check out Watchmen. I mean, you, the thing has never been out of print, so get it used in Amazon or something and just check it out. And behind, after each book, there's like a little appendix to like a character wrote a book in that world. They excerpt chapters from that book. Every character has some contributing thing that the book examines. So it's it's as dense as anything from J.R. Tolkien, Lord of the Rings. So anyway, I'm going on 20 minutes now. We all have, we all have uh, things to do, lives to live. I appreciate that you guys... Uh, Signing on and saying hello to me. We have a great community here, and I'm I'm honored and humbled to be a part of it. So, thank you, folks, for teaching me to be, teaching me to be a better pipeman. Take care of yourselves. Let's see if I finish the rest of this.